you're doing. Um, maybe it just would be good if we lifted our hands to the Lord this morning, and uh, or just at least one hand, and just, Father, we just receive your help. We receive your help, your partnership. We partner with you uh, for your plans here on this earth. You said that meant that uh, we'd have more than enough to give unto every good work. Lord, I thank you for increase to these people this morning, to your people. Thank you for increase. We just receive it. And Lord, as we give this morning, as we honor you, Lord, I thank you take these the seed that's sown. I thank you that multiply, a multiplied return. And we just lift it to you and we say thank you. Thank you for these gifts. Thank you for in a sense, the loaves and the fishes. Thank you for what's enough to meet every need and to be a place of overflow. A place of overflow. Lord, thank you for overflow in this body. Thank you for overflow in finances. Thank you for overflow in this place. Thank you for overflow. Yeah. Thank you, Father. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and give. slide up that's there right now. I just want to draw your attention to this slide. Um, sometimes things that the Lord started, they just continue. He'll speak to you again. And I just wanted to reiterate something that we see a lot, but maybe we don't understand um, how much it means, and that's this this arrow. It's up here. It's, you see it on cars, you see it on a sign. This is um, This speaks of your life's purpose. This speaks of your life's destiny. This speaks of what were my life. It's, I mean, it's not going like this, okay? But your life is going like this. It's green because it's growing, because it's flourishing, but it can't stay here. I'm sent. You know, even beyond church, it's not a church that's just within its walls. It's, it's to be, we're to be thinking outside what? To know him, make him known, to reach the lost had to reach the lost, to disciple the found and empower the, those that are called. Just say this, say I'm called. That's right. You are. God's called you. And um, uh, we're in a series right now called Fundamentals. It's talking about finances. Uh, fundamentals, we talked about one of the most fundamental things that you could ever establish is the rules, right? To the game of basketball, what's fundamental is not dribbling. It's not um, it's not shooting, it's not uh, uh, defense, it is the rules. And how many of you know house rules don't translate beyond the house? How many of you like to make up your own house rules for games, right? Like you got a game of cards and, and you're playing and you got house rules. So when you go to somebody's house, if you don't know how they're playing the game, they might, you might be playing a game and then they, they throw some card on the table and then they like take the chips or they, they, you know, they uno something, you know, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And they're like, that's how we play here. It's like, that's not what it says in the, in the book. I mean, you know, house rules versus the rules in the book, if you, wanna, if, you want the, if you want what's going on and what you're building to translate and have a greater impact to where you're able to play be, beyond just your walls, it would be good if we would establish not just our house rules, but we would have rules by the book. By the book. You know, it's one thing if I was to get up here and teach you what I believe, but it's a whole nother thing if I stand up here and teach you what the book says. 
I, when we talk about finances, I'm not up here to tell you what I believe. I'm up here to tell you what the book says. And guess what? What I find is when I look at the book, when I look at the rule book, when I look at the book that there's more than just the rules, it's alive, it's changing, it changes me. The Bible says that I, I grow and my, my faith grows from faith to what? To faith. There's a, there's a growing from faith to faith. This is actually what the sign of how am I doing with the Lord. You don't look at did I mess up. Anybody mess up this week? Good. I'm not alone. You don't look at it. Did you mess up? The question is, are you growing? If you, if you failed, listen, are, are you aware that you failed? Are you bringing it back to what he said? See, the key to growth, the key to, uh, uh, the key to any kind of change, whether you it's called repentance, which means to change the way you think, is you have to first hear what God says. When you hear what God says, let's, and you acknowledge that, that's called growing. You acknowledging what the book says, it, that's how you grow. That's how you go to the next level. You got to know the rules. This last week, um, I was I think it was Thursday night. We got to go see a basketball game. Uh, we got we got Brad in the house, Ozark head coach basketball. It was so cool coming to state, take these this crew to the state game, and they're playing this game. But what was funny was, um, uh, I got to sit down like pretty close to the court, you know, and cheer on. And uh, right in front of me was uh, all these refs. They had these these uh, badges on. They said, you know, ref. So they had like this special backseat pass. Although they're not refing that game, they are the refs for the state tournament of this class, right, for a basketball. So they're sitting there watching the game, seeing what's going on. And right behind me is I have these fans that really, really, really like their team, but are very, very, very unaware of the rules. And so they cheer for their team, and they're yelling things, and it, after a little while, I'm like, golly, you guys, come on, right? Like, like, know what's going on here. The refs start cheering for the refs. They're like, good call, good call. You know, I got to cheer for my team. So I'm caught in, in the middle here laughing at the refs, and they can hear me laughing when they're, when they're like, oh, hey, good call, good call. And the call, didn't, it didn't matter which team it benefited. They were cheering about the call. How many know the right call matters? How many know in your life the right call matters? The, the right call, not just the call that you want. How many of you know if, if, if you have a game and you play a game at your, and you got hometown refs, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Hometown refs. And your, your hometown refs are so stacked that you win at home all the time. Do you know that actually jeopardizes your ability for when it matters? To go to the next level, you can win at home, but how come you can't win on the road? How come you can't win when you go there? How come you can't win when the, when the storm's brought to your house? How come you can't win? Because you have been playing by the wrong rules. You've got it stacked. You've got refs in your favor that are not calling it by the book. It's so important. This is fundamentals. With my finances, I have to call what, these finances by the book. What happens is when I do that, this is fundamental, that I, I understand this kind of thing. What happens is I'm poised and positioned to go to the next level. It's called stewardship. A faithful man, the Bible tells us, will abound. That's what God has for you. But you know you can't be faithful apart from hearing what God says. I'm going to say that again. You cannot be faithful without hearing what God says. And a faithful man will abound. This is a promise in God's word. This is not a might. This is a will. Okay? This is, in a sense, almost like a command. This is God's will for you. A faithful man will abound. How am I faithful? Find out what he says. And if it doesn't match to what I believe, change what I believe. Change the way I think. The world wants to conform us, Romans chapter 12. But he says, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. So week one, we were talking about this, just living in this, the, uh, the fundamental to my finances, understanding that there is an omni-God. In other words, he's all-knowing, all-loving, all, 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 all-powerful, all-present. So in other words, he has the answer, he has the ability, he's present, he's there. Listen, having that understanding about my finances is that there's one greater than me. 
And then the next week we were talking about, so he, we know we got fundamentally talking about do dollars. I got one greater than me, but I need to value his presence over provision in my life that I would recognize and acknowledge and, and want to partner with him. That that would be the ultimate goal that I would recognize it is my partnership with him is what brings my success. That I would recognize as we looked at Abram when he went and he, he, he defeated this army of five kings or four kings with, with 318 men. And Melchizedek, which is a type and shadow of Jesus, came out and blessed him. He said, blessed, they won the war. In other words, they, Abram recognized that winning of the war and every possession that he brought back was not by his 318 men doing. It was God. It's time we recognize God in our, in our fights and not just give, recognize him when things are bad and, and blame him on that and said, God, you should have, could have, would have done something that I wouldn't, right? And we kind of moved from that place into last week. And what happens is when we, when we associate um, problems with and things that are going on in our life, when a bomb gets dropped and it seems like there's smoke all around, what happens is we begin to complain and murmur. And the problem about murmuring, how many of you said, what did you say? And it was like nothing, right? Um, that's how we're beginning to make decisions in our life based upon our murmuring. But our murmuring does this. It actually clouds the water. Our murmuring clouds. It's like the enemy drops the bomb. So why? So that he can create this smoke screen. I was looking up smoke screens and, and how they've been used in our military. There would be planes. They could, they could turn on... Uh, just like if you've ever seen an aerobatic show, and they could have these cool little streamers of smoke on the wings and all this. Well, they actually made uh, for the military both tanks, ships, uh, planes, where a plane could come in and just and just turn on the smoke and drop and drop a smoke wall to where combat could happen behind the scenes, and the enemy wouldn't know what's going on over there. Their bullets would be being shot, and they would they would be in a sense. Uh, yeah, De, um, not decapitated, but uh, help me, capacitated. Yeah, whatever that word was. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to do what they wanted to do. They would be stalled. And a lot of times that's how our life is, is we're stalled because of our murmur. It's gotten cloudy. And the only thing that we know is where we have been. But the crazy thing is, it's like we, can't, we look back and we really can't even get a clear picture of where we have been. So, so we only can see right where we're at. We can't see ahead, and we're making decisions within the fog, within the junk, within the funk. And so last, last week, we, we started talking about, um, we, we pulled out this, this, this thing, and we, had, we dedicated children. And we had these. I handed a couple of these out. Anybody can sit, you can't may not see this, but this is a seed. And I asked this question, will this seed grow? Will this seed grow? This is what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about partnering with God. We're talking about growing. We're talking about your purpose and my purpose. See, within this seed, there's a purpose. The seed has a purpose. Will it grow? Well, that's up to you and what you do with it. In my pocket, I also got some seed. It's a dollar. Will this seed grow? Will it fulfill its purpose? Did you, know, did you know that every dollar that comes into your hand has a purpose just like this seed? I don't know what happened to it. I think it fell down. No, it's right here. Will this fulfill its purpose? It's crazy that in this seed, it's not, the, the, the goal of this seed is not just to grow. The goal of this seed is not just to grow. That's incomplete. The goal of this seed would be to reproduce. The goal of this seed would be fully, not just grow and sprout green, and, and this is actually a pistachio, okay? But it would be to become a full-on tree and provide fruit, shelter, all these things for those around. The seed has a purpose, and it's more than to grow. This dollar has a purpose. And it's more than just to grow. We're going to talk about that a little bit. You know, that's crazy. I got, I got this seed. I got this seed. And I got this seed. That's where I came from. You came from a seed. 
you're, sometimes we don't think about that until we maybe hit eighth or ninth grade and we sit in a high school class. <laughs> you came from a seed, your daddy's seed. Did you know that every seed God created has a purpose? And growing is not the point. It's fulfilling your purpose. So what's amazing is, is there's, there's seed given to us. And see, as this seed, this seed is the greatest of all of these seeds. Because this seed, as man was given seed, as in dollars, and authority, you could call that even in this world. If you got money, you got what? Power, authority, right? So, but man, the greatest, this seed right here, was given the, the, the ability, not only the ability, the, the, the command to steward this seed. Both of them. He said, now, you be fruitful and multiply and subdue it. Subdue the earth. So the, the purpose, your life, your life's purpose, whether you knew it or not, is to influence. These dollars that were given to you to influence. That's, that's, that's these, these purpose is to aid in your purpose. See, this purpose a lot of times is telling us what to do. It gets out of order. My purpose is to influence. This dollar was given to me to influence. This seed was given to me to influence, to plant. How many of you ever have a, you have a house, or and you, you, when you get your house, you're like, I'm going to plant one of those Japanese maples, or a crepe myrtle, or roses, or whatever. You want to make it your own. You want to make it what it's supposed to look like to you. You're, you're influencing. Not just how you feel about your house, but how you see your house, how others see your house. Listen, this is supposed to be a pro, be for, this is given to you, rather, to influence. And unless we recognize that, we won't use it properly. Unless we recognize that, and ultimately, the ultimate seed is me, and that these dollars we're talking about fundamentally is this, they serve me. This is the most fundamental thing about the dollar. They serve me. Somebody say that. They serve me. I don't serve them. This is fundamental to handling this well, because otherwise what will happen is this will tell me what I need. This will tell me when I can rest. This will tell me what I'm, when I'm happy. This will tell me, no, 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 no. This will tell me where I'm supposed to work. This will tell me how I'm supposed to treat my, my wife tonight. This will tell me this is garbage. This is paper. Okay, no, it's cotton. I get that. This is print. All right? But it's really important for us. So the question is, this, ask you this, um, will this seed grow? This is what I want to ask you this morning. Will this seed, will you, if you're to point at yourself, will you grow? See, in order to grow and fulfill your purpose, it takes what God has given you from the beginning. It takes you stewarding those things. So that you can fulfill what God has created you uh, to do. Let me show you a little bit real quick in Scripture, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. That you are, what? You are God's handiwork. You are something that God fashioned and put together. You are a seed. You're a, you're, your origin started right there. And, and he, he, he says that you're created in Christ Jesus for a reason. What? To do good works. That's what, that is your purpose, to do good works, which God created beforehand or in advance so you could walk in those. But guess what? If I'm going to grow, the same way if this seed is going to grow, it's going to take partnership with what? With the Lord, with what he would say to do with this seed. What is he saying to do with this seed? What is he saying to do with your life? What is he saying to do with this seed? It's, hu it's hugely important that if we're going to walk in what we, God has designed us to, we understand that omni, the one that saw it all, that's what omni means, all, from the beginning prepared and he, good works for you to walk in. That's amazing. And because of that, he's, he's given to me tools to my disposal to position me so that I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people. It's amazing, it, say, it doesn't say those that have money will abound. 
It says that the faithful man will abound. So he's given me everything that I need, he tells me, for, that pertains to my life and my life in him. And it's found in his word. It starts there. We're going to have to value the seed of God's word if we're going to steward well that which God has given us into our hands. And ultimately, this is what's in my hands right here. Now hang with me for a moment, okay? Here's some purpose of the seed. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Now God is able. How many of you say that? Say God is able. God is able to do what? To bless abundantly. So that, or for this purpose. So that in all things. Somebody say all. All things. All, at all times. But you would, you would not be constricted. This is not God's plan for you. Are you saying, are we one of those blessing, prosperity preachers? You dag, I'm right. Because it's not enough. God didn't say it was enough for you to have enough. So if that's what you believe, you need to change what you think. Because that's not what God said. You might believe that, but that's not what he said. And so if I'm going to sit up here and teach the book instead of teach you what I believe, then here's what you're going to have to do. We're going to have to make an adjustment on how I see and rec realize this, that God, he is able. See, if it's just enough for me to have enough, I'm, I'm simply relying on my own ability. But instead of God's ability to bless my business, instead of God's ability to, to, to give me wisdom to coach, instead of God's ability to give me wisdom to pastor, to see increase, and to see your family increase, instead of God's ability to see whatever it is I set my hands to prosper. Isn't that what he said? And whatever you set your hands to would prosper? Is that not God's will? That is his will. That you would be the head and not the tail. That you'd be, you would be, uh, be but the ahead and not tail, above and not beneath, that you lack no good thing, that your blessing basket would be prosperous. In other words, that your storehouses would overflow. This is God's plan for you. Why? So that you have more than enough to give unto what? Every good work. Well, that's what you were created for. So if you're constricted to do the good works that you were created for, that's demonic. And sometimes we live in that place uh, of, under the enemy's influence simply because uh, of our lack of belief that, guess what? I am supposed to have more because the more has a purpose. Where we get off is when we think this is for me. This isn't for you. This is for you to help fulfill your purpose, but this... Ha, this overflow is so that you can be blessed and be a blessing. And here's the key. Order. Order. Who's first? Who came first? In the beginning. In the beginning. You want to see, you want to see increase come into your life? In the beginning. I'm telling you, this right here, God gave you so that you would have a more than enough and abound to every good work. He so desires his children, blessed, so, so, so desires. I can't say that enough. And if we've only been believing to meet our needs, let's change what we're asking for because he said that I could have enough to give unto every good work. Listen, what's in your heart? We need to investigate some of the things that have God has placed into our hearts, these good works, these things that we desire to give to, and say, Lord, thank you that I can give to that. Lord, thank you the increase comes to my account for this. That, for what purpose? Because this, this right here has a purpose, but its purpose is determined by this purpose whose hand it comes in. That's it. So if you're stewarding your purpose well, here's what you can expect. But if your purpose is to get more instead of grow, instead of this, this, is, this, is, this is not just to grow, it ha has a purpose, then guess what? Um, even the dollars that you have, they'll be empty. Even the dollars that you spend on your house or whatever, they'll be empty. That which this brought won't bring what it promised because the promise of what you're looking for can't be found in this. It comes from what the Lord has already prepared in advance for you to walk in. That's what's so cool. 
God loves me so much that he prepared good things for me to walk in. He's given me this to, to, to give unto all good works. This is amazing. But this also has a purpose that's even beyond that. Let me, let's go here real quick. Luke chapter 16, 10 through 11. Excuse me, 9, 10, and 11, if you can. I only gave you 10, 11, but I started in verse 9, so if you'll go back. Thank you so much. It says, and I say to you, this is God speaking. It's in red. Jesus says, I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon. This, see, money does, is not evil. Money's not bad. It's a magnifier. Okay? Uh, sometimes, the most stingy people often are those that have the least of these. Oftentimes. Okay? But this right here, this right here was given to you, and he's, Jesus says, hey, make friends with unrighteous people mammon like it's not righteous it doesn't have he says when you could because when you fail or and that would be translated better this when this is gone it depend on what translation you're reading it would when this is gone there's going to come a time when this is gone and you fail and you're done and your days on the earth are numbered this dollar right here was given to you so that you um would, would happen, would there, there'd be some people that would receive you in heaven. So that's what it says. It says that when you fail, they may receive you in an everlasting home. Who's that? The friends that you made with this? Now, I'm not just talking about friends as in, oh, hey, what's up? We're talking about for eternity. Friends. Common. Some common ground. You know what that is? Jesus, that's the Savior, goes on to say this, for he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in what which is much. Therefore, if you have been faithful in, uh, in, if you've not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you or trust you true riches, even the things that you desire? This is what's so crazy. This right here, the things that your heart really desires, how you steward this determines whether you walk in them or not. Joy, peace. These are the we're talking. Let's talk about even true true riches like this. Where if I can yield to what God says about my finances, I'll yield to what God says about my healing. If I can yield to what God says about my finances, I can yield to what God says about my victory. If I yield to what God says about my finances, listen. I can yield to what God says about me hearing his voice. So what am I partnering with? What am I partnering with? Did you know in order to grow, it always takes partnership? In order for me to fulfill my purpose, in order for this seed to fulfill its purpose, in order for this seed to fulfill its purpose, it takes partnership. But you know what? Oftentimes we're partnering with the wrong one. And this is what I, I this just kind of gets, it's finances. And let me go here real quick. How do I partner? Here's how I partner. Partnership is simply this, yielding. Did you know that's what partnership is? When you come together and you get married, did you know you're going you're gonna to have to learn to yield? But listen to this. Your yield, how you yield, determines your yield. Okay. So your yield, your, your, uh, your willingness to give way determines your yield or how much you produce. Your corn, well, how much did that yield? How, I mean, how many bushels an acre did, did that corn produce? Did, did, are you like Iowa ground making 250, 400 bushels an acre record? Or are you Arkansas River Bottom maybe 80 to 90 bushels per acre? Quite a bit of difference. All right, what does your yield look like? What does my yield look like? Well, my yield in my life deter is determined by, based upon my yield. My yield is determined by my yield. How much I produce is determined simply by how willing I am to say, God, whatever you want. My life is yours. Oh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to end up in Africa somewhere. Really? What if that's your purpose? What if that's where the good works are that you were created for? And these dollars were meant for that. So that you could walk in what your heart really desires instead of going to the end empty. 
the house is full, but the heart is empty. How do I partner with God? How do you and I partner with God? I wanted to go to Ezekiel 37 for this because I think this really shows you and me our response. Again, not with everything in our life, with this seed right here, with my body, with me as a person. This is how I partner with God to see increase in my life. Right here, Ezekiel 37, 1 through 4. It says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. Okay? This is the prophet Ezekiel, and the Lord comes and takes him out into the midst of this valley. And in this valley, it's full of bones, full of dead bones, dry bones. There's no flesh on them. And, and he said, um, then he caused me to pass by them all around. So can you imagine the drone footage? Right? I mean, he, he, got, he takes him with him, and he's like, I mean, he's in a drone, like full, full view of this valley. Great, great, great things are happening. He's like, wow, wow, wow. And they're, they're, he can see that they're just bones. They're dead. And they're dry. And that they were indeed very dry. They were old. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can these bones live? And here's what he said. I answered, oh, Lord, you know. That's yielding. What do you say, Lord? Lord, what do you say about this? Lord, what do you say about this? What do you say about my family? Lord, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? This is fundamental for me handling, understanding that this right here, this seed right here is to determine, this body is to determine what, what, what this goes. Every dollar that comes in his hand finds its origin and its purpose based upon the purpose of this seed. And how do I partner with his purpose? You find out what he says. Oh, Lord, you know. There's a lot of things that we know, right? And, 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 and we, we think we know certain things. And, we, and the Lord would say, what did you say? And we would say, uh, nothing. But sometimes it would be good for us to, to, to listen to what we're murmuring about. Listen to what we're saying. Because what happens is we would identify that we're partnering with a different picture. Let me keep on going here. Last verse, uh, verse 4. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, bones, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Here's what I'd tell you this morning. What did God say? Lord, what do you say about this? And he says, well, they can live. Then he would say, well, then tell your bones to live. Tell your finances what they say. Tell it. Tell Tell your body what it was created for. Tell your, like if you're even struggling in your health. Find out what God says about you and your purpose. Because he has a plan for all your days. And he's promised me years. And I got a purpose. And I'm going to fulfill my purpose. I'm not just going to grow. I'm going to go. I'm going to do what I've been called to do. And every dollar is going to aid in that. And I'm going to have more than enough. And I'm going to be able to give them to every good work because that's his promise. Stop looking at the present and murmuring. Instead of find out what he says, look back. Yeah, it was dry. It was dry. It was very dry. Have you been in a dry place and to be very dry? Okay, it's dry. But what do you say? God, what do you say? What do you say about everything? That's fundamental for me to, to fulfill and to walk in purpose. To walk out of depression. To, to have meaning and joy to every day. Fulfillment is found in understanding that I am a created being that's been created for good works. And everything that I have in my life, I should shape and position and make a decision based upon the picture that God has painted in my heart. And if I don't have a clarity of that picture, his words create pictures. If you find out what he says, remember he said, let there be light, and there was. Then he said, the earth, and the, his words create pictures. Find out what he says, and I guarantee you, there'll be a picture that's formed in your heart. And when you find out that picture, then these can have their true function. And when these have their true function, what happens is that's called stewardship. That's called faithfulness. And a faithful man will do what? Abound. So how, what am I doing with these? And, I, and I, I don't have time to go real, real far because I wanted to sing a song over you this morning. There, uh, what God is saying over us, I think it's important to realize who we're partnering with is incredibly good. What he's prepared in advance for us to walk in is incredibly good. 
But now listen to this real, real quick. I think this is, is huge. When we talk about, <clears throat> Lord, what do you say? And the Lord would say, then say to these bones or say to this circumstance what I say. Um, sometimes we, we say it, but then we move over to, into a different uh, place of speaking. Right? It goes on to say, I don't have time to turn there, but in Ezekiel 37, the bones, uh, they got flesh on them. He said, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know. And the Lord said, well, then prophesy to these bones and tell them to live. And it says that flesh came upon the bones. But they weren't alive. And so Ezekiel could have walked away and been like, well, I guess this doesn't work. There's opposition to your purpose always will be it's important for us to realize that, that we don't stop short but what happens is again the, the, he'd look to the Lord and he looked and, and Ezekiel the Lord said tell the breath prophesy to the breath to the spirit they, they tell him to from the, come in and make these bones come to life and, and that's what happened it's important that we not only hear what God says about this body, my purpose in my life, about these finances, but that I continue in it. Because what happens a lot of times is this, that we start a story, but then the enemy is great about talking to us about chapters. You, how many know every book has a chapter? And so we start this story, and it's like once upon a time. And you open that page, and you see what God's promised to you and when you hear me standing up here and talking to you about God wanting to provide for you and there's these pictures because we're speaking God's word and the Holy Spirit comes and he, he speaks very directly and shapes something and hope comes to your life and so you begin to uh, you begin to paint some pictures in the, that chapter because here's the deal though, though God has from the beginning created this work for me to walk in listen I, he's created a story I'm still the one who illustrates the story. God's the author. God's the author. I'm the illustrator. How many of you know if the pictures don't match the words, the book doesn't make sense? It's frustrating. How many of you have ever, have ever um, illustrated something pretty colorful that was just supposed to be black and white? Let's, let's keep on going here. I want, want, to, want to hit on this. So this chapter. So we turn the chapter and we start on God's page, but then something happens. A story, another, another uh, something happens. And instead of looking back to, to God and what he has to say, when we were faced with opposition uh, or we turn the page into a new chapter, you could call it a new season. How many of you know seasons matter? Seasons matter. And you can't do in summer what you did in the winter. It, it doesn't work that way. But, but what you do in summer is really still not up to you. It still takes you following out what the book, the book is so that you stay with the story. And what happens a lot of times is when, when seasons change, when things go, when something happens in our life and it doesn't look like it once did, we can tend to get frustrated. We can tend to get frustrated a lot of times. The, the, it's just a change of season, but because we're not harvesting the way we harvested before or this isn't the way it was before, we can begin to question what God's doing. We can begin to question what God's saying. We can begin to question everything instead of sticking to what He says. And we can begin to let a different story or ending see, that's a, begin to be authored in our heart. And we begin to make decisions based upon the story that's being authored in our heart. What is, what is the season you're in and who's talking? Because if I'm going to fulfill my purpose, if, if I'm going to grow, listen, every season has a purpose. Winter has a purpose. There's a strengthening of the roots. If I don't understand that winter when it seems like maybe I'm taking a step back or, or whatever it might be, if I don't understand the purpose in that season, then guess what? The strength that's supposed to be going into the roots, guess what? When spring is time, there won't be a shooting forth. 
So it's important that in my season that I, I, I'm not frustrated with God and begin to illustrate my own story. But instead, I stick with the author. No matter the season, find out what he's saying, stick with the purpose. This is where it's so important for us to be in the Word. Seasons change. You can't, ha- you can't live off the same Word all your life. You can't live, you can't gather more than enough yesterday to live on tomorrow. You got to hold on to what God says daily. What does He say to you today? What does he say to you in your season? What story have I been listening to? Who's been authoring it? Is it God? Well, then hold on to it and say what he says again if you're not seeing what you desire to see. Say what he says. God's working. He's working. He's working. In this time, this season, you might be, it seems like the season everybody hates the most is what? Winter. You don't see the green and the flowers, the summer. When I, in the fall, when there's just all this harvest going on, it's winter. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if that's the season that you're in, listen to what God's saying. And that's why we wanted to sing this song over you this morning. I was going to do something different. And this morning, they, they said, we got this song ready. And I'm like, it's incredible what God says about you in this season. And so as we close this morning, I want you just to sit in your chair if you want to stand, whatever you want to do. But we just wanted to minister to this house this morning in song by what God says over you. And then here's your, here's your role. Here's your role. Yield to him. Here's your role. When he says it, Lord, what do you say? He says this, then I want you to say it. I want you to yield to what he says this morning because the yield in my life, the the fulfillment of this this seed, the fulfillment of this seed, the fulfillment, it it depends upon my yielding to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's close in prayer and then go ahead and sing this song. Father, thank you for your word this morning. That that I'm partnering with you. I just tell you that. With the words of your mouth, tell him this morning. Lord, I partner with you. I yield to you this morning. My life is yours. You created me for good works. Thank you for positioning me to walk in them. In Jesus' name, amen. You can bring the house down a little bit.